You're watching Leafs Morning Tape with host Nick Alberga and former NHLer Jay Rosen. The show starts. In one week from now, the NHL regular season will have finally concluded and onwards and upwards will be to the Stanley Cup playoffs, which are expected to get underway on April 20th. It's Nick Alberga and the returning Jay Rosil for the Thursday edition of Least Morning Take presented by Botano. What's going on, Rosie? What is happening? Good to be back, man. You guys miss me or what? We did, and uh, I think the news cycle missed you too because I thought this is perfect. You come back to the show... And we had some Arizona Coyotes news break on Wednesday. I love that. <laughs> Me too. Is it official or what? It just really sounds like it's one of those things that's going to happen. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, according to Frank Saravalli, it was another Frank, a Frank bomb on Wednesday. But talks have picked up in terms of relocating the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City out of all places. Like, imagine wow. being a player on that Coyotes team. And I've never been to Salt Lake City. I heard it's beautiful. But going from, like, Scottsdale... To like Mormon country. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it would be a little different. I do think it's really beautiful there. Um, I've only like stopped over there, but I mean, the mountains are right there. There's tons to do. I think that once you uh, get adjusted, that'll be a pretty sweet little uh, city to play in and and something that people I think will find is, is amazing for an NHL player. And for those people there, I, I think, you know, they could support a team. You look at, you look back at right now at Vegas and it's like, how on earth did they not have a team? You got the struggling Coyotes, just the joke of the National League, just limping along pathetically. And here's Vegas for years and years and years who clearly could support the living hell out of an NHL team. And they just they just didn't. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed the same thing happens up in Salt Lake. But I don't know. You, you, don't, you don't want to see anything go backwards in the NHL. But I think the writing was kind of on the wall a long time ago that 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 market's just not going to fully support an NHL franchise the way it needed to and uh, on to better things, I guess. Dude, I don't know why, but this story just reminds me of, remember the Rick Nash trade saga? I think you probably were in the NHL when it happened. Dude, it took Rick Nash like seven yeah. years to finally get traded. <laughs> and this is what I felt about Arizona. Like the writing's on the wall. If there's anybody out there listening or watching and are stunned by the developments of the last 24 hours, you're crazy. Like, I, I guess it on a show in Vegas on VEASAN, um, a channel I go on quite a bit, uh, betting network, and they asked me about Arizona having a new building. I'm like, ask me in three days because I don't believe any of that bullshit. And it's just the back and forth, the back and forth. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if a story came out in the next 24 to 48 hours where it's like, yeah, they're going to support a new building. And you see that plot that they, they put together last week, man? It looked like a $7 billion uh, arena. I know. How do you justify that in a market that hasn't proven itself? I don't know if that was kind of a last-ditch effort to try to get this thing, you know, prolonged a little more. I don't know, but it... Uh... I don't know. That's kind of what I thought. I was like, geez, they're really going to make a go of it because I was kind of in and out of the news cycle. And then now it looks like that was just kind of a, a last ditch effort. I can't imagine they're going to build that damn thing. And uh, it kind of sounds more like, you know, almost a done deal of Frank's breaking it. I believe it. Yeah. And so it seems like we're headed in that direction. Again, there's just so many moving parts of this whole situation. And I think the tough thing is Gary Bettman, the commissioner, just waving the flag and saying, hey, you know what? I was right. Or I was wrong. I just, this can't happen. Then there's this conflicting stories that even if they go to Utah or Salt Lake City, there's the potential of a couple of years from now, Arizona finally getting that building built and coming back version 3.0. But again, there's just so many moving parts to this story. It's absolutely wild uh, that a team, you, you know, in 25 years, when we have a conversation on this podcast, hopefully we're still doing it. And I bring up the fact that the Coyotes played out of a barn that seated 4,500 people. We would just laugh about it. We still laugh about it. Like, I think that's the great thing about this pod. The two things that we love talking about, LeBron James, you hate him, and the Arizona Coyotes, you hate them too. <laughs> well, when things are embarrassing, you got to call them out, I think. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, man. I just don't know if a team will ever be back there. It's you look at the different markets that are possible and I don't know. I hope hopefully do it right. They got some, uh, some ownership up in, um, up in Salt Lake with some deep pockets that really want this. So I think they'll do it right. And I've said before, um, you know, when you're trying to make it work in a new market, you have to do it right. I mean, you look at <clears throat> Tampa Bay, the way they've done it, it's, it's right downtown channel side drive and they have had nothing but success. 
Um, and then you look at, you know, Phoenix and, and the Florida Panthers have come a long ways, but they've had their their times too. And you can't put your building out in the boondocks to save a couple dollars. No one's going to come out, especially when it's a new sport and a new market. Like you got to use your heads here. And I think these guys uh, that want it up in Salt Lake are ready to do it right. And it'll be it'll be interesting. It's it's kind of fun to see. And it's exciting. We've just done it with Vegas and with Seattle. And, you know, you, you blink your eyes and all of a sudden they're kind of, uh, you know, you forget that they weren't in the league a little while ago. So I'm sure that'll be the ticket as well in Salt Lake if they do end up moving up there here soon. I was laughing last night, um, just the comparable from like Shane Doan's career, where I think he played one season, made his debut in the NHL, and then the franchise relocated. And a couple of weeks back, Josh Doan, his son, made a debut for Arizona, and they could relocate next season. Like, it's amazing how stuff like that transpires. But you can only wonder how Matthew Nyes and Austin Matthews, to an extent, feel about the team they grew up knowing and watching, I'm sure. And now all of a sudden there's not going to be a team there again, not a foregone conclusion just yet, not etched in stone, knowing Gary Batman, he's going to do a presser in the next 24 hours and be like, there's no way this is happening. So uh, fingers crossed. That would be kind of cool to have a team in Salt Lake city. Never could have expected that, but don't forget what, like 20 years ago, there was an Olympics there. No. Yeah, there was. I remember it. They did it up pretty big. And I mean, there's a little bit, I know it's just kind of an un, kind of a little hidden gem salt lake up there and i think yeah you mentioned they have a big mormon population that's kind of what it's known for but uh i think just good people up there and and a very nice city from all things that i've i've known and if they have a successful uh nhl organization up there it'll be more reason for people to go visit and uh do some other things around there but it's beautiful country so did you see this uh, nhl pa annual uh, player poll that was put out yesterday yeah i didn't analyze it too much though what stuck out for you we were uh, rated the number one least podcast in the world. I heard that. Well, that didn't take long. The boys are you, hot. Yeah, the boys are. We're buzzing. We're buzzing. So 639 players were surveyed on 15 hockey-related questions, the least related ones. Best style, Nylander 2, Matthews 3, behind David Pasternak. Give me a break. I don't really get the pasta thing. He's got good style. Yes. I mean, it, nowadays, Ovi's style is... <laughs> it's already like big tongues out does he still have yellow lace as he has before he rolls up his sleeves so like you can see all of his wrist he's got those big dangly skate laces on his pants that dangle down pretty low used to tint the visor a bit i mean his style <laughs> is off the chart so i'm surprised he wasn't mentioned i can't think of what pasta has really but uh you know, Austin just wheels and deals out there. He just looks good no matter what he's doing. And Willie Styles, I can see why he's uh, he's up there too, I guess. I'm sorry to break this to you, but it's off the ice style. It does not matter what these guys look like on the ice. Oh, it's off ice style? What about Mitch's like Mickey Mouse shirt and stuff? It's kind of cute. It's kid friendly. It's neat. Did make the cut. Um, I should mention as well, for those of you in the chat who thought we were serious of being, about being the number one least podcast, they did not vote on on podcasts. These guys don't listen to podcasts around the league, not just ours, but uh, I know a lot of people out there fell for that. I think that was kind of funny reading that in the chat. Uh, best playmaker, Marner ranked fifth behind Panarin, Dry Saddle, McDavid, and Kucherov. That seems kind of accurate. He's one of the better playmakers in the league yeah he's right up there those are uh that's big company he's got uh, right in there so that's cool to see um what about what else was there like most deadly around the net you know like you got to give another one to austin after this season the one that drew the ire of leafs nation people were pissed i i never get pissed about polls like it's it's they're so dumb and so subjective to a degree i guess because players are are polling on them but uh most complete player Matthews wasn't ranked in the top five. Uh, you see on your screen, Sidney Crosby, number one. Barkov's on that list. Like the, the the usual suspects. But, I mean, the fact that Matthews wasn't probably top three is kind of scary. But it just maybe speaks values. Maybe he's underrated by his peers. I just think with the goals being so much more than the assists, you want someone that's kind of got a plethora of all of it that plays with an edge as well, like a McKinnon, you know, who can, you know, a little bit more power forward action to it, shot block. And even though Austin does that stuff, but just more of a, he's more of a pure shooter. Like when you think Austin Matthews, you're just like goal scoring savant. And if you're going to sit down and go over the most complete player, I can see why he'd kind of get left out of that. doesn't bother me, but um you know, it's just because he stands out as such a pure goal scorer. 
I'm not losing sleep, especially with my uh, brand new king size uh, Douglas mattress. Phenomenal stuff. The folks over at uh, Douglas hooking us up. We love them. And my sleeps have been fantastic for the last week. And I uh, totally recommend those Douglas mattresses. So I'm not losing sleep on that. Also not losing sleep on the uh, grand opening for Greta Bar YYZ. We've been teasing it for a while. Finally, we were pumped to tell you that Greta Bar YYZ is set to open its doors on Friday, April 26th. Deep in the heart of King Street West in downtown Toronto, Greta Bar will act as your go-to spot for all the hockey playoffs and baseball coverage you can handle, whether you're pre-gaming, looking to watch the big game, post-gaming, or just looking to dust your friends off at some arcade games. Greta Bar YYZ will have you covered with delicious eats and thirst-quenching drinks. Go big. Go to Greta Bar YYZ. Big baby, I love it. Yeah, my bad. I didn't tell you there was a commercial, but there's a commercial. Uh, Greta Bar YYZ, April 26th. That's going to be my go to spot. Um, obviously, you guys know I frequent King Street West quite a bit. I live in the area, but looking forward to the opening of Greta Bar and uh, watch some playoff hockey there, man. It's going to be great. Yeah, seriously, it might have got cut off, but I mean, before playoff hockey starts, you can maybe watch the Masters as well. Well, you can't because Greta Bar YYZ is not opening till uh, April 26th in the Masters or this weekend. So. What a dropped ball, Greta. <laughs> oh, well. No, we saw it under construction when we were visiting there during the uh, All-Star break, All-Star yep. game, and uh, yep. it's coming along good. And I know the one in Calgary. I was just at it. Edmonton, they're, uh, they're becoming a little staple of uh, a great place to go in Canada. So good for them. Boy, so Lowell Rosie taking over the commercial or what? So you're not the official <laughs> spokesman of uh, not Greta aware Bar. of that. Didn't get that in the pre-meeting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. My mistake. I didn't. I didn't prompt Rosie. I didn't tell Rosie there was a commercial after my Greta Bar read. So that's on me. The playoffs are near, as you know, Rosie. Are we ready to bleed blue? Nation gear is ready to gear you up for Toronto's playoff run. Rep your favorite team as they battle for the cup. Shop the exclusive bleed blue playoff tee and more at nationgear.ca again nationgear.ca for the exclusive bleed blue playoff tee as you see on your screen right there can't wait to rep that while i watch the toronto maple leafs take part in the stanley cup playoffs i know i like it bleed blue bleed because of like the passion that you have but if you know they haven't really got it done in a long time so also your heart bleeds a lot so it's like a double entendre you see Yes, we'll go with that. And uh, hopefully I'm not bleeding anytime soon. And hopefully the Toronto Maple Leafs go on a very, very lengthy run in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Another great guest on today's show. We got Mike Rupp from the NHL Network. They're playing the Devils again, played for the Devils, had a really strong career. Looking forward to asking Rupper about team toughness. If you do recall, I think it was last November. It might have been just after that game against Philadelphia where Mark Giordano did like the Superman punch and we had Rupper on the show and he pretty much called the Leafs soft. And we didn't argue with it, but I, I wonder if his opinion has changed in the Maple Leafs now. Yeah, me too. They look uh, they look considerably different the last, what would you say, I guess just maybe post-deadline once they kind of got, got some things going, but they had some injuries and some guys all over the place. And you look at them now and they, they look considerably different than they did certainly at the end of last season. Um, but between the trade deadline and free agency, I'd be interested to know what his opinion is on this as well. And if uh, if they shored up some of the shortcomings that they've had in the past and if they're, a, you know, a more complete playoff team, so on and so forth. And a guy with uh, with his experience would be a good guy to pick his brain. A lot of the folks in the chat really, really impressed with your fancy uh, words and double entendre like you're just you're killing it today. I know you're out a couple of days and, and back in the mix and uh, you're in peak rosy form today. Speaking of peak form, make sure to check out the Leafs Nation After Dark with Zach Phillips uh, after tonight's game. Just four games remaining here in the regular season at the Leafs Nation 401 on YouTube. Leafs Morning Take wherever you find your podcast. Don't forget, subscribe, like, hammer all those buttons at the Leafs Nation 401. Leave a five star review. If you find us in podcast form as well, that'd be fantastic. Brought to you by DoorDash. It's time for the appetizer for a limited time. Our listeners can get 25% off up to $10 in value and zero delivery fees in their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app, enter code NATION25. That's code NATION25. All in uppercase, 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Offer valid in Canada. Subject to change, terms apply. So you missed a couple things over the last couple days, but don't worry, we'll catch up here. It's the Leafs and the Devils tonight. 
We'll get to that preview a bit later on. But 66 goals for Austin Matthews, man. It seems like he's getting a 70, right? <sighs> he's got to have a two-goal game, if you ask me. I think there's going to be a game where he doesn't score in the next four, and he's got to make up for that with a two-goaler. But I don't know. the. I mean, Devils aren't into it right now. You could try to take advantage of that. I imagine he's going to be playing, I don't know, like a fair bit. I don't see them like doing anything to the to the minutes. I mean, just kind of play regular. I think when you start tiptoeing around stuff like that and messing around, like if you go try, if you're going to play to try to not get hurt, it's often when you get hurt. And if you just go out there and play, you know, it should be business as usual. But I hope they're not dicking around with him too much give him his regular shift give him the end of the game go for that empty net or that type of thing so we'll see but i imagine his shot prop i'm gonna mash the over depending on what it is because i think he's gonna be trying to get it no reason not to oh it's funny you say the shot prop i had over four and a half shots on goal the other night and there was a stat correction after the fact like four or five hours after like the guy had seven shots on goal but i look at the box score and i'm like why is there five and there's been five for like two and a half periods but Anyways, they figured it out, so I didn't blow a gasket on social media. Sheldon Keefe, by the way, at the morning skate, we're going to get to a lot of the news and notes. A couple different players leaving the lineup, some entering the lineup back after a lengthy uh, time off. But uh, Sheldon Keefe saying Austin Matthews was next man up Tuesday with the empty net in Jersey. Uh, says he doesn't use him four on six because uh, that was the big story as well from the game on Tuesday is the fact that David fucking Camp was on the ice for like the last three minutes. Bertuzzi scores the empty netter. It seemed like a perfect time to put Matthews on the ice. But yeah, like this is, I like the fact that there's actually something to talk about. Like we know they're going to be in the three seed for the most part. We know they're likely to play Florida, but like the, the chase for 70 is kind of fun now, man. He scored in six straight games here. Yeah, it's wild. Every time you you watch and check the box score, you're just like, "Good lord, man!" It just doesn't stop. He's he's an absolute machine. But yeah, you'd you'd think that that would. I mean, it's not like putting out some Tinkerbell, you know, super offensively minded guy. It's like, well, he would never be out here anyways. I mean, he's solid in those situations, and he'll be in the lanes and he'll block a shot and he'll. I know you don't want him breaking his foot or some shit. I get it, but yeah, you'd think that that you know, if it comes down to like sixty nine. You know, you'd look back and be like, well, that little uh, six on five situation might have been good for old Austin. But it doesn't matter. It's just a number, but it would be pretty neat. I mean, 70s off the bloody charts, dude. Nuts. I mean, 60s yeah. off the charts, 50s off the charts. We're talking about territory that you don't even you don't even talk about. You don't even talk about a seven anything ever. I mean, 62, I think, is the last one that he did that he left on 62 for or something like that. And it was like, good Lord, man. And now the last, like you say, five, six games, he's just blown the doors off of it. He's a machine. So I think he's going to need a, a two-goal a two goal game coming down the stretch. And I'm predicting that if he gets a two-goal game in the next four, he's going to get 70. It's a rarefied error, and uh, I would love him to do it over the next two games because it's going to be at Scotiabank Arena, and I just would love to see the reaction of all the sushi eaters and all the suits there are closing business deals, man. The, the reaction if a guy gets the 70 goals in Toronto, man. Like, I know we... We goof on it quite a bit, but I would just love to see a reaction. Like, if there's one time where you react and give a guy a standing ovation, imagine he pots number 70 at Scotiabank Arena. There'd be some people in the Platinums with their dry matrini. What, what's going on? What is the business here? What's going on? Oh, the man with the 70th. Oh, that sounds quite nice. Anyways, my portfolio is still a verse. Oh, my God. I hope they rock and roll a little bit, but uh, you would think they would, man. Again, I think that a lot of that building should be embarrassed by that Buffalo game there a week and a half ago, whatever. Um, that place was palpable how rocking it was. And if he gets 70 in town, I would like to feel like the roof is going to blow off that place. And I want to give a little benefit of the doubt to that because I, when we're in that building and when it's rocking, it is just energetic. It is, you can feel like the pressure of the place pumping up and it's pretty neat but it doesn't seem to translate to tv i don't know why that is if it's different acoustics or whatever the deal is but that building certainly does get loud and it doesn't seem to translate all that well to tv so i would assume it'd be rocking if if austin got 70 there tyler bertuzzi has nine goals in the past 13 games uh surprise surprise because they have changed the lines <clears> so <throat> often but you took a bit of a hiatus and that top line is still intact talking about bertuzzi matthews and domi they were great once again on tuesday in newark 
but nine goals in the last 13 games for Tyler Bertuzzi, 21 on the season, which would have been crazy to say even two months ago, if I were to tell you, hey, he's going to score 20 plus, you'd call me crazy, which I am. But it's been a night and day turnaround for Tyler Bertuzzi. Are you firmly a believer in this guy now? Yeah, man. I mean, he is a he's a good hockey player and he's playing his game again, you know, and I, I think he was having trouble finding that when he first put the Maple Leaf jersey on and he's playing in this market and, you know, had a tough time getting it going. He was he was uh, he was snake bitten a lot. Lots of times you're like, I can't believe he didn't bury that. He couldn't believe. And after you do that for a while in a new market with a big spotlight on you media presence you can start to lose your confidence and get frustrated and and try to force things and overthink things and get away from your game a little bit and that might have happened to him in the season but you know just as we were hoping I mean Maple Leafs fans have a lot of hope throughout a season and throughout their tenure as fans and they were hoping that this guy's just going to find his game he's going to find his game remember what he used to be remember remember how it looked when he was on his game and he's found that now and he's He's scoring at will. He's getting his nose dirty. He's in front of that net, you know, to play with, you know, a nice compliment of, of Max Domi who can find Austin and make those plays and get to the puck first. Austin is what he is. And then you got, you got Bertuzzi in front of the net to kind of get those deflections and screens and, and pick up those rebounds and garbage goals and get his nose dirty. It's just a wicked compliment of a first line. And, I think we've been asking all year, like, can we find some chem with a line and, and just let it be the line for the rest of the year? And I truly believe that that line is written in stone, whether they have a good first game of the playoffs or not. They are going to start the playoffs. If they're not, I'll quit the show. They have to. It's got to be written in stone, man. They're too good. They've. Th this is what you play for. This is why you mix lines. This is why you try different guys is to try to find something that these three are right now, and they are written in stone, if you ask me. It brings a different dimension too, right? Because you talk about Mitch Marner returning. He's played three games. He has three assists, plus two, five shots on goal. But playing with Tavares and McMahon, which allows obviously Nylander to be on the third line. Spreading the wealth seems to be working. I think at this point with the season winding down, I think it's likely they get to game one of the postseason with these lines intact. But I couldn't agree more. I just think all three of those guys, A, it's the chemistry for me. And B, it's like the different intangibles that they bring to the table. They're not all the same type of player. And you you can't overlook the just the the chemistry alone, man. Like Domi and Matthews, Bertuzzi and Domi, uh, it's so evident that I, I think I give these guys probably a longer leash than I would other lines. Say you struggle in half a game, or you know, for a game and a half in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I know the season's on the line at that point, uh, but I think I give them a, a, a longer shelf life because I, I we've seen like this is approaching a month where it's been really really strong and dominant play from that Matthews line, and I think the best part about this. Remember the conversation like a month ago that Matthews needed Marner? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. And good, good on them. I mean, you, those guys are such good players. They shouldn't really need each other. I understand why putting them together is explosive and dynamic and there's potential there, but they're just so good. I think they're so good. They make others better obviously they don't need each other right they make others better and bring others up to their level so if you can spread that out over two lines and have a willie nylander like on the third line all of a sudden when you're rolling lines if you're sheldon keith and you're in game one two and you're rolling the lines against these guys and they're just looking over going jesus man we don't get a break we don't get that you know third line that kind of has a little few holes in it and maybe they're nervous you can pick them apart and jump on a mistake or something like that it's like no they're going to be you know potentially controlling the play in the ozone over and over shots rebounds scoring attempts getting it in the end and hemming in their defensemen and making them tired and they're getting to the bench going fuck as soon as i get out there i gotta get out now it's marner and his boys and it's it's just overwhelming it's really deep deep forward set of lines and if they're clicking man I think you can just grab the momentum of a game, put a team on their heels early, and that's huge in the playoffs to you know be able to settle down and say, you know, we're kind of in control right now. We got the momentum. Let's keep it. You can get up one nothing with that kind of thing and, and kind of control the game, and it, it, it's looking good right now, and I'm glad that they've spread it out a little bit because you don't have all your eggs in the one basket going back to the well over and over again, kind of desperately trying to get that goal. You're just going to – you can let it happen organically now with this with this lineup.
You might cringe at this, but uh, Matthew Nyes played on the fourth line predominantly uh, on Tuesday, and I loved it. Uh, I think depth is so important this time of year from a matchup standpoint. I think having a guy of the yoke at Matthew Nyes on, on line four just opens up so many more different looks. Uh, don't forget Kelly Yarncroke. It's been really, really quiet on that front. Hopefully he's ready for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. There's just so many moving parts, but... I think maybe maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel of, and method of the madness of, of Sheldon Keefe and why he's changed the line so frequently in, say, the last two years alone, right? Yeah, he sure has. And <laughs> we've talked about, you know, the the successful teams. They have that depth. They have, like, those guys that come out on the fourth line and are, like, a huge integral piece to them winning, you know, championships and getting to the finals and this and that. And, you know, when you look at it, you're like, why is – why is nice on the fourth line? But when you look at the lines and stuff, it's like, well, shit, it, it's not like a demotion. It's not like a bad thing. It's like, no, that's how deep they are back there. And you got a, you got a fourth line where you can have a guy like him, you know, chase down the pucks and get some offensive zone time by using his body as a power forward. He can make plays and get a scoring chance when you're, you know, you're playing your seven or eight minutes and, you know, that's all you can ask and just be defensively responsible to have a player as good as Matthew Nyes on the fourth line is nothing but a positive thing. And the same thing on the back end, you got lots of depth and different options. And I think that, uh, I think they're in a really good place, man. They've always been too thin and too lean and you just, your guys are who they are and you just hope they do something. Now we've got kind of a plethora of, of options and an arsenal. And honestly, you got to take your hat off and tip your cap to Brad tree living, man. He has taken a lot of a lot of time and, and architected this thing in a in a way that seems to work and they've kept it under the cap and there's lots of options and different types of player it's it's looking pretty good man I'm, I'm pretty excited don't want to get too high but like this team looks like there's a ton of potential for the playoffs spe specifically which they haven't really been able to say hard gm man it just it brings me to tears when you talk about Bradtree living, especially when you take into account the previous general manager what this guy's put together build a statue for Proud tree living. Uh, Timothy Lilligren participating in, in the Maple Leafs optional morning skate. Obviously not close, but trending. Maybe he gets into a game next week before the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Joel Edmondson is going to return tonight. Missed eight games with an undisclosed injury. Uh, Timmons and McCabe out tonight. And maintenance, uh, they're saying, for McCabe. But this is pretty much what we expected. Some guys in, some guys out. Mark Giordano is making a stake. The last little while to maybe get in that lineup. It's good to see. I love internal competition sometimes. Yeah, it's good. And like you say, you look at some of the guys and the options on the back end and, and deeper in the forwards and you're like, Jesus, I don't know who I like. There's a, a bunch of different options and who could work together and guys are injured and coming back. So, you know, this is a better problem to have than being so thin. You're calling guys up, trying to just shove someone into a hole. Right. So good problems to have. And the internal competition yeah, I don't even know if I don't think they would look at it that way at this point at all. They've all been through, you know, the the long grind of the regular season. And when guys get in and get their chance and guys are come back from injury and that they go in there and they just try to do their best for the team and to help out their their partner or their line mates and and do their job. So whoever is in there, I'm sure kind of everyone's pulling for them. And I think they're really starting to get a, a feeling of of team first this time of year. And, you know, as these four games start to wrap up. You know, the trainers pull out the playoff gear. Everyone's got the new hoodie and the hat and they're saying <laughs> and their internal stuff. And it's like, fuck, we're going real bullets here soon, boys. And everyone's going to be excited and, and ready to rock. So it's an exciting time of year. I'm sure the boys are fired up, too. That's why I got a fucking bleed blue, buddy. Bleed, bleed blue. blue. If you don't have a blue, if you don't have a bleed blue shirt on, you ain't cool. So go buy that. Yes. Now. Another great movie quote on this podcast. Appreciate that and appreciate you. Connor Dewar coming back in for Noah Gregor. I think we can both, uh, not to speak for you, but I don't think Noah Gregor is going to be on the game one roster. Again, adjustments will be made throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs. Didn't mind Gregor's game the other night, but Connor Dewar, the last little while, has really come into his own, has found his place on that fourth line. Ryan Reese has continued to play really, really strong. Nick Robertson came back last game after back-to-back -back health bombs, scored again, five in the last 11. I love that guys are stepping up to give Sheldon Keefe options and reasons to put them in the lineup. It's a, it's only a positive as you get ready for the, for the real deal. Yeah. That's what the, that's what management and coaching says this time of year. And, and also around training camp, like make my job hard, make it hard, make it. So, so many guys are gunning for that spot 
you know, the options are, are high and you, you, you make, make the job difficult for the management and the coaching staff to figure out who they're going to play because everyone is chomping at the bit, giving them what they want to see. So, you know, that's all you can ask at this time of the year. Um, like you said, guys are chomping at the bit, ready to get in there. And the little bit of internal competition is, is not bad this time of year by any stretch. Never heard anyone, that's for sure. This interview is brought to you by Douglas, named Canada's best mattress on Canadian living. Douglas is loved by more than 200,000 Canadians, and they're backed by over 10,000 five-star reviews. Every mattress order comes with a free comfort sleep bundle, two memory foam pills with pillow protectors, one luxurious cotton sheet set, and one mattress protector. Order today at douglas.ca slash LMT. That's douglas.ca slash LMT. To today's guest we go... It is Mike Rupp from the NHL Network. Um, obviously, calls some games as well for the Pittsburgh Penguins and uh, former New Jersey Devil as well. What's going on, Rupper? What's going on, fellas? You guys got me loud and clear. We, or what? We, we got what you loud and clear, clear, and it's great to have you on. How you been? I'm good. I'm good. What's uh, what's going on? I mean, exciting time of the year right now, right? Just uh, playoffs around the corner. Maybe a little sun's out a little bit more frequently right now. This is the time of year we all wait for. Oh, what about a little bit of this, rapper? What about a little bit of this? The master said, I was just looking. I was just watching. I was watching a little, uh, you know, at the range this morning, kind of getting fired up for it. So let's go. <laughs> well, hell, we got the Leafs on, uh, on the docket here today. No more golf talk. But we had you on earlier, and... Your impression of the Leafs was maybe they didn't have enough gusto. Maybe they weren't rough enough. Maybe they weren't built for the playoffs. It's looking a little bit different this time of year with some additions they've made. What's your thoughts overall on this team heading out of the playoffs? Uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I know every day you guys are talking Leafs, obviously, with uh, Leafs morning take and just the uh, being up there in Toronto. I, I don't think stateside, there's enough people talking about the Leafs right now, to be honest with you. And I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to put the card ahead of the, the horse and say that this team's going to win the Stanley Cup, but they've been pretty good. <laughs> like They've been pretty good, right? And I know every team's going to have their off nights, their off games, but those things that you mentioned there, Rosie, um, I don't see that happening as much now. Mm -hmm. I was hard on them in the past because I actually think with the talent pool that they have, that team should have done something up to this point. We're, whatever, park that, that's in the past. They're starting to figure some things out now, and I like the complementary pieces they have. I think they're harder to play against now. They seem a little more connected when they get into situations. I mean, are they the Broad Street bullies? No, they're never going to be. Uh, no one's going to be. But they're more close to a complete team, in my opinion. Um, I, I just, yeah, I feel, I feel a little different with them. I'm very intrigued at what we're going to see here in the next couple weeks come playoff time with the Leafs. It's like they actually respond when stuff happens now. Like even the There's other a night, now. Tavares, There's a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Like even yeah. John Tavares the other night, I forget who hit who, but a devil's player hit a Leafs guy and JT stepped in there and said like, nah, like yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a mob mentality. I don't think something has to happen every time. I mean, you know, you guys, you both know about this, you know, situation and position very, very well in the game. Like it, you need to address things sometimes. And Rupper, I mean, is it cliche to bring up the whole Ridley Grigg and, and Morgan Rally thing? Like, do you think that could be used as like a turning point, a galvanizing moment for this team? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought so at the time. And I know you guys I watched what you guys said on it. Um, you know, I was kind of bounced around doing some some hits in, in the Toronto area with it, too. It's it's again, just to go off what we just said it showed a heartbeat it showed like enough is enough of all of us knuckleheads had been sitting here calling out the Leafs for these things over the years shut us all up please do it please make me put my foot in my mouth you know what I mean like and, and they that was a moment that they basically it was enough's enough like we're not going to tolerate just you making a mockery of us in these ways and some people might think it was stupid some people might thought it was an overreaction I thought it was perfect and it was perfect because of who it came from as well, right? Your best defenseman, one of your most, um, you know, one of your leaders, one of the most yeah. favorite teammates on that roster. I thought it was perfect. And yeah, maybe, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things I think to come into play, but that was a pretty emotional uh, pivot that we haven't seen. And I, I think this team's been better since then. 
Yeah, it's odd that it uh, you can trace it right back to then to when they started playing good hockey and coming together and finding some chemistry, oddly enough. But speaking of which, they, they've spread their talent out a little bit. I mean, Austin Matthews speaks for himself. Mitch Marner was hurt for a little while. He's back. And you got William Nylander and John Tavares, obviously. They've spread them out from the first yeah. to the third lines right now and are finding success. In your experience, does that work well when you uh, when you don't put all your eggs in one basket? I think so. Uh, I think it. I think it works well, but you always have it in your back pocket to go back to and and load the deck, right? And uh, that's something that that you need to have uh, available too. Because there's going to become a time where, no matter what team it is and what lines it, that are happening, it, it's going to be like, all right, we need we need a spark, right? And there's different ways to kind of spark that. So I think they've got the flexibility with that. But I love that. Um, yeah, you spread out, spread out that wealth. You can only go into a game and, and listen. It's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like you know, you know who you're targeting as far as game planning. It's Austin Matthews. That's it. So if you can have Austin Matthews, I think it's. I mean, honestly, if you took, I'm not saying that they, they should or would do this, but this is just to prove a point. If you took Austin Matthews and you put him on a line with two fourth liners, guess what? you're still going to game plan for Austin Matthews, which frees up the rest of the talent pool, right? Like, so I think that's a, that's a very extreme example. Yeah. But if you were to just, just spread the wealth like that, now all of a sudden you can start freeing up different guys. I mean, Willie Nylander, this guy's, he's got 90, what is he, 90 some points right now. Um, I mean, he kind of is a, an afterthought when you're playing the Leafs, when you're doing it like that, if you're spreading it out. So um, that should allow him to have the proper matchups to, to succeed. And, you know, I like it. I like spreading the wealth, but when you need to load the deck, you load the deck up at the right time too. talk about loading the deck, uh, Austin Matthews, um, incredible year. I mean, I've run out of superlatives to describe this guy, but where does he rank on your heart trophy ballot right now, rubber? Yeah. So this is, this is mind blowing to me. Because where what's he 66 now? Yeah. So we've got yep. 66 right now. Very well could get 70. We've talked that all year. If you were to tell me before the year that a player was going to get 70 goals, I mean that's the Hart Trophy guy, 100. percent No questions asked. But I think these storylines that have happened. This is probably in my lifetime, at least from maybe not my lifetime, because I don't know as a kid if I was really dissecting all these things. I'll say. Uh, my playing days and post playing days. So you're talking the last uh, 20 years. I have not seen an Art Ross, or sorry, a Hart Trophy run like this. Or Art Ross as well, but the, uh, the Hart Trophy race like this. Uh, it's it's there's so many different ways you can go about it. I, and you mentioned at the top, Sidney Crosby, or sorry, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Sidney Crosby, what he is doing, and you're talking about an MVP that screams it. But in my opinion, he can't be in the top three. Like, he can't be in the – I don't have him in the top five. I think I did a thing the other day, top seven. I think I had I think I had Crosby at, like, I don't know, sixth. Uh, Posternock at around a seventh, but maybe – or right around the – they were right around the same. But I, in, in, to answer your question, I've got Nikita Kucherov at one. I've got Nathan McKinnon at two. I've got Artemi Panarin at three. And I think – then I have Austin Matthews at four, which is mind blowing that he would be fourth knowing and seeing what he's doing. I, I you know, I might be dead wrong. People might be, the, the whole point is it can go a million different ways right now. There's so many great storylines for the heart. And, and I think it's the way you look at it too. Like the most valuable to his specific team, the, right. the most standout, I think how important are you putting emphasis on goals compared to points? There's a yeah. few ways to look at it, but the bottom line is like you say, there's so much happening at the top that it's, it's, it's mind blowing how many, uh, how many storylines there are, but to move back to goaltending, I mean, you've played, you've played with Henrik Lundqvist with Mark Andre Fleury with Martin Brodeur. I think you play with Cujo, like some of the greatest goaltenders in the history of the game, especially modern era. What's it like to have a goaltender like that for the bench as far as confidence is concerned and confidence in your in your goaltender and the guy back there? And how good do you think these two Maple Leaf goalies need to play in order to garner that? Yeah, I mean, it was it's almost it's almost not fair to some of the goalies that that I've had because we definitely would cheat. You know, a guy like me who didn't score a bunch, um, I cheated like a, you know, like a son of a bitch for offense. We all did. And we were able to, 
because I knew that I had to work really hard to get back. I knew I had to do all my things defensively and be responsible. But I also know, know that I could, you know, if if Rosie got the puck, I'm blowing the zone, man. I'm blowing the zone because if it gets caught, if 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 that puck doesn't get out, um, you know, it's it's a problem. But you also have someone that can bail you out back there. So I, I think it was something that always gave you confidence going into any game, knowing that our goaltending is better than theirs makes you feel better even if your team is not as good as the other team um but you know from the leaf standpoint i i think that i i find and it go, kind of goes off what we we're talking about at the top like they don't have to change who they are or they don't need just even over the last few years it wasn't like oh you have to you have to get a Marty Bordeaux in Toronto. You have to get, uh, uh, you know, a, I keep it on New Jersey, a Scott Stevens type defenseman, you know, you know, you just have to have, you have to cover your bases and it has to be good. And I think right now, if the Leafs get, and they're certainly capable of getting better than that, if the Leafs get 900 save percent type goalie, that's good. That's fine. You know what I mean? And, and look at the last couple of years too, the way that Colorado won. You know, Darcy Kemper, I love him, a teammate of mine. He, 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 did, he did a good job. And he had some moments where he stole goals and maybe even games. But he just had to be good. Why? Because Colorado played with the puck all the time. You know what I mean? Like, they controlled so many different elements of the game. Uh, you can go back to, to Vegas last year and what Vegas did. I mean, Vegas had goaltending tandem or, 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 or rotation to some degree all season long. And when Aiden Hill got in there in the playoffs, he just had to be good. And there's times he was great, but I think that's where the Leafs are at right now. I think Samsonov has to be good. And when he's good, this team wins. I was looking what the last 30 games, what are they like? I think they're, they're like, uh, they've only lost nine. Right. So they're yeah, like, yeah. you know, you're talking about a team that's 21 and nine and there's nights, there's nights where I, you also look and maybe even expected goals for or against, it's not in the Leafs' favor, and they still win. So you just need timely saves in those games. All right, the Leafs were maybe outplayed in this game, but they still won that game. Like, that yeah. that's something that's not so Toronto Maple Leaf-like that we've seen in recent years. Like, if they were outplaying and controlling the game, they were winning that game. If they weren't, they weren't. Now we're seeing a little bit of them getting some wins in some games, even in the games that they do win. You know, he letting up – Letting up three goals in the game or maybe the odd four, that's okay. When you're scoring four, five, six, you know what I mean? Like this team's capable of that. So uh, I yeah. think they're okay. I really do uh, think their goaltending's um, just fine. It just has to be good, and that's got to take a lot of pressure, I think, off those guys. Yeah, we're cautiously optimistic, admittedly, in this market. I mean, we know the numbers. We know the data. One playoff series in 19 years. But it's 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 fascinating to me, like, the misconception looking back at that Florida series last year where it's like people thought that the Panthers crushed the Leafs. If you do recall, the first two games, Toronto was the better team. Bobrovsky was a difference. He was a story. So it gets back to your point about goaltending. You get a couple more saves. You never know where that Leafs team is last year. But how do you think they stack up? I mean, it seems yeah. very likely at this point, as we have this conversation, it'll be the Panthers in the first round here. Yeah, the, you, you you hit that the nail on the head there uh, as far as misconceptions. And this is the thing. I love that story that of the Florida Panthers last year. It's one of those great, I'm a big underdog guy, right? Like, yeah. I love seeing those types of stories happen. Florida Panthers didn't outplay anybody in the entire playoffs. They didn't outplay anybody. They maybe outwilled or out, you know, had the, the they were the Cinderella story. I mean, I always go back to the quotes with Rod Brindamore. Their team gets swept, okay? And Carolina gets swept, and they controlled every facet of that series. They dominate. I would almost say they dominated a series that they got swept in. I haven't seen uh, that before, right? Like, no. so that kind of just shows, like, the Florida team was just, you know, so just to, to, to poo-poo on the Leafs because of that, no, man, they were doing that to everybody last year. And that's what, to me, is a little different with Florida, even though they're stumbling a little bit now down the stretch. Florida's a different team than they were last year. Like, they actually have the ability to control some games now. Um, you know, yeah, so, I, you know, I just think that uh, the East, uh, in my opinion, they've, it's been wide open all year long. I've thought all year long that the, the, the Panthers were the team to beat because of those reasons and uh, because they're a little old school and I – I am a little, uh, you know, I, I give a little extra bonus points for that because I don't think a lot of teams have an answer to a good hard four check and a punch in the mouth type uh, approach that they have. But they they look pretty human down the stretch here, right? Boston, mm -hmm. 
Boston looks pretty human this year. I mean, yeah. the New York Rangers, like if you allow the New York, New York Rangers to me are a lot like we've seen of the Leafs of current years. Like, and, and I think the Leafs are different, a little bit different now, but if you allow the New York Rangers to play their game, they'll, they'll dust you, man. You'll be done. They'll snap that puck around. They'll look like the globe trotters out there. But if you throw a wrench in it and just be like, Hey, if you're going to beat us, you're going to find another way to beat us. I don't know if they have the answer for it. Right. And that, that was kind of the Leafs before, which I think they are starting to show they have an answer for now. So to, I guess my point and all that, if you start naming off the, the heavyweights of the Eastern conference, uh, and I don't necessarily put Toronto right in that, but they're pretty human. And that to me gives teams like Toronto a really good chance, you know, and it's pretty wide open. I think in the East right now, looking forward to it. And uh, I would set the over under on two and a half scrums in the first 10 minutes of game one, if it's the Leafs and the Panthers and weirdly, I would take the over. Cause I do feel a bit differently about this Maple Leafs team. I yeah. would always take the over on you Rupper. Thank you so much for your time today, bud. Hey, anytime guys enjoy. Uh, we'll chat down the stretch. Sounds Thanks good. Rupper. That's uh, Mike Rupp from the NHL Network, covers the Pittsburgh Penguins as well, former National Leaguer, played with some amazing goalies and uh, knows that brand, Seriously. knows that style. So that that's a that's a big, big respect thing when somebody like Mike Rupp, the way he played the game, is giving the Leafs their flowers. That's big stuff for me. It is. And like he said, down in the States where he does a lot of his uh, his work, it's kind of not, a, not much of a buzz right now. There's a lot of heavyweights in the East, like he mentioned. And I like it this year, man, that the hopes aren't, super high i mean the hopes have been a lot higher and expectations have been a lot higher in the past with much much weaker teams if you ask me teams with much bigger holes in their game and in their lineup i think they've plugged a lot of those holes they've found some chemistry they've got guys hitting their stride and their peak goaltending can be can be what it needs to be that's been proven it's uh, it's a more exciting time than I think it's been in a long time, but I like that it's not really on anyone's radar. And uh, I think that's right where they need to be going into to the postseason. And shit, it's right here, man. We got four games left. Tick, tick. They're gone, and, and we're in the thick of it. So exciting time for, uh, for Leafs Nation right now. Man, this time last year, I couldn't go out in public because I had a permanent boner waiting for the playoffs with O'Reilly and Shanner back in the mix and Achari. That that was the year. That was the year. And I, I love the underdog role. Like, we felt that way going into the season. The Leafs were an afterthought. They lost again. New GM. Everybody was pro Dubis. And here they are, slowly but surely, as Rupper mentioned, the last 30 games, they've won 21 times. Uh, by the way, since the Morgan rally game, the Leafs have the most wins in the NHL. Like we talked about that being a galvanizing moment. You sort of scoffed at it. I remember that vividly, but no, it's, it's a galvanizing moment. It's great to see. And uh, this team is on fire at the right time of season. So again, we, we're optimistic, but we understand uh, it's game by game with us. And uh, first and foremost, I want to see Nylander set that career high in goals. Matthews uh, obviously getting the 70 goals here, and we'll see if that transpires here in New Jersey coming up tonight. The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day off with the new Cinnabon pull-apart from Wendy's. That said, there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Faceoff Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if it make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and a small coffee would be a great choice. Sign up for Daily Faceoff today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Toronto's won six of seven. As mentioned, they're 27 and one since uh, the last 28 games since Morgan Riley and the Ottawa thing. 1-1-0 one, one oh against New Jersey this season. They won back on Tuesday, 5-2. Joel Edmonton's back, uh, Ed Edmonton, excuse me, is back. Missed eight games, uh, undisclosed injury. Couple side notes too, and you can tie this into the Botano wrap-up, Rosie. Matthews has 16 goals in 17 career games against the Devils. And did you know that Tyler Bertuzzi has scored a goal in eight straight games against the Devils? It makes no sense. I did not know that, man. I, I wonder if they even know that sometimes. But a reason to go get your cookies, man. Don't go down to their level if they're not as into it as, as you are at this time of the season and where they're sitting, fine. But play your game. Focus on, on your own team your own game your own your own program and go out there and do it and let that stuff happen man obviously there's good juju against this devil's team for for a few different guys and shit man like you say the botanical wrap up you might have to sprinkle a little heavier than normal on this game here tonight 
The Batano Wrap-Up, presented by Batano.ca. The game starts now, 19+. plus. Please play responsibly. Batano is the official partner of Copa America 2024, taking the beautiful game to new heights in the Americas. Join Batano on their journey of passion, unity, and unforgettable football moments. Excuse me, couldn't get that out. But Austin Matthews, anytime goal. Going to look at that. I've been smashing that. Six in a row for that. Um, weirdly, my buddy is going, uh, my buddy Jake, who works at SiriusXM NHL, is is going to the game. Uh, he brought up yesterday on one of the podcasts I do that every time he goes, Bobby McMahon scores. So I'm going to play that. Whatever. Bobby McMahon's been a great story. 14 even strength goals, 15 on the season. I'm playing Bobby McMahon. Uh, as you mentioned earlier on, I'm probably playing the Austin Matthews shot prop. I think he's going to be horny. I think they're going to feed him. I'd love to see some power plays, too. I know I've ragged on the officials a bit lately, but that game against Pittsburgh, I don't know if you caught it. It was a joke, an absolute joke. They blew the whistle three different times in five minutes for Sidney Crosby. Pittsburgh had five power plays. Toronto had two. Even the other night, I want to see some peepers for this Leafs team. And Marner's back, and surprisingly, they look much better and, and cleaner on the power play, too. Unsurprisingly, you mean? It was like sarcasm, but yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's nice, man. Get that peeper going a little bit. I know they were lagging there here this month and at the end of last month. So get that going. And yeah, the refs can't really handle, but focus on yourselves right now. I just I feel like these guys are are kind of hunkering. Blue. Yeah, they're bleeding blue, man. Hunkering down and and they know what they're doing. And they're I don't think they're grasping at straws. I don't think they're clamoring to try to find anything. I don't think there's any worry or desperation right now. I just I just see a pretty confident group who has kind of slowly but surely figured out who they are. Everyone's kind of figuring things out, and it's it's all coming together, man. And I've I've said since I started doing this show, it's all about building blocks, putting them together one day at a time, and just building until you've got this big, well-rounded, strong thing in front of you, and and away you go like uh, like a bullet into the playoffs. So you know, hopefully tonight is another step towards that, and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be jumping on a couple of those bets that you'd mentioned, especially the uh, Austin Matthews shot prop. I think he's going to be just clapping them at the net all night. Still curious uh, if Austin Matthews will, in fact, play that back-to-back Tuesday and Wednesday. I guess a lot of it will be dependent upon how he does the next couple games here in his uh, pursuit of 70. But uh, I know you'll be playing a back-to-back next week. You're back in the mix on Tuesday and Wednesday, the final two days of the Leafs season, right? I do believe so. Looking forward to it, man. I mean, for the dog days of the season, these are actually pretty exciting uh, days, and there's lots to talk about, and the Leafs are clicking along like this. So excited for the next few days, shows, weeks, building into the playoffs, man. Matt writes in, how horned up will Nick be when AM gets to 70? I will immediately dummy five shots of tequila, and I hate tequila, and I puke every time I do shots. Just ask producer Vic. The last time it happened two weeks ago was a rough night for yours truly, but I I will be very pumped up. Weirdly, for a guy who could eclipse 70 goals, he is not getting the respect he deserves. It's so hard to score in the National League, man, and He's making 70 look like 20. It's 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 disturbing. Like I I tune in and again, we're conditioned to think Austin Matthews scores every game, which folks, this is not how hockey works. It is really, really difficult. Again, my co-host is a guy who scored five and a half goals in the NHL. Like he can tell you it is tough to score in this league, right? Five and a half. Well, if they utilize me properly, I could start having a little sniffs at some some double digits and could have been a six but... there. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not easy. He makes it look so bloody easy, man. He scores at all different positions. It's just, it's just different than Ovechkin. If you wanna, I don't know, man. It's it's early in Austin's Austin's career, and to you know, you can't predict injuries and whatnot. And but with OV being the guy that's going to be the number one, he just does it in a different way. And I don't understand why they can't quite stop that. Same with like Leon down on the other side, but just the one timer from the same spot all the time, tons and tons and tons of power play goals. But Austin scores all over the place at will at different moments with different styles of, you know, shots down low, deflections, tips, quick ones, straight burning the goalie from way outside, one tease from down on that spot he likes just crazy he can do it in all different ways and i it just seems to get easier and easier he seems to get more and more confident with it i could see this guy going down as one of the greatest goal scorers in the history of the game which is just insane to say at this point in time but tell me tell me i'm wrong with what he's doing this year man it is insane yeah. oh it's absolutely insane there, there are no words to describe the season that austin matthews is putting together and to tie a bow on the mike rupp interview 
it's so fascinating. It speaks volumes to where the game's at, where somebody could score 70 goals and they're not going to win the Hart Trophy. Like, it's very unlikely. It's going to be Kucherov or McKinnon. Uh, the Lindsay Award will be very interesting, too, voted on by the peers and his peers in the league. But nevertheless, we love Austin Matthews in Toronto. Should mention, just to wrap, uh, Carter Hutton's going to be in the mix tomorrow. And uh, I was able to track down Mark Crawford, who uh, is in Switzerland. Of, co- of course, if we do forget, like nine years ago now, it's nuts. Almost a decade ago, Austin Matthews, prior to getting drafted first overall by the Maple Leafs, elected to go over to Switzerland and play for Zurich. Uh, so Mark Crawford, who coached him there, is going to drop by the podcast tomorrow. Looking forward to that. I just want to get his reaction, his thoughts. I think the first question would be, like, when he stepped on that ice for the first time, did you just know? Like, he's coached some greats. I mean, Joe Sackick, Forsberg. I mean, the list goes on and on. Nasland, did he just know that Matthews is going to be Matthews? Because I think that that's the cool thing about Matthews. Like, when he was drafted, like, yeah, he was known – as a great player, but if you do recall, like it was like Patrick Liney was the guy who was going to score goals. Yeah, he was a, for a first overall, a little bit under maybe appreciated to start, but he came in with a bang in the NHL and just kicked the door open with four goals in his first game in the league. Like, who the hell does that, man? Just another thing you'll look back on and say, oh, yeah, by the way, this is what he did. But it'd be fun to talk to Mark Crawford. Kind of a legendary coach, my favorite coach growing up, just because of you know you'd watch the the battles that the, his yeah. team, the Avalanche, had with um, the Red Wings when they were both winning cups. But it'd be cool to get his perspective on Austin Matthews when he's just a kid. Probably didn't know a whole lot about him. Okay, here's a big talent, talented stud who's going to go high in the draft. Fine, fine, those happen every year. But did he know you know how big and how good this guy was going to be? It would be interesting for sure. That is it for us. Uh, thank you to everybody in the chat, even though some of you are chirping me right now for some reason. A lot of you saying I should, I need a girlfriend. People are chirping me for wearing skinny jeans. I don't know what's going on. So we got to have this <laughs> show before I fucking pull the guest tomorrow. You guys don't deserve a good guest tomorrow. You deserve a 28-minute show, and maybe that's what you're going to fucking get, even if Matthews gets 70 tonight, because I, I hate you all. No, I'm kidding. You guys are great. Nick. At the Leafs Nation 401, subscribe, like. Uh, at least morning take wherever you find your podcast. Leave us with a five-star review. Thank you to producer Vic. Thank you to Mike Rupp. Thank you to Jay Rosell. I'm Nick Alberga, and we'll talk tomorrow. Take care. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews. We got clips. We got epic rants by Jay Rosell. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.